Hi everyone, this video is going to be about what we should all be doing as non-American investors and what is the highest reward yet, okay, high risk investment that we could all make in 2020, hands down the best thing we can do with our money. All right, let's get going. Firstly, I want to say that I really do like America and I really have amazing American investor friends who give such good advice. But the problem is all the YouTubers I watch in particular, they all talk about real estate investing in America as their wealth building solution. Now, I, as someone who doesn't live in America, I can't access these deals. They get 30 year fixed interest mortgages like on real estate properties that they could purchase for like 3%. It's like free money. It's amazing what they can do over there. They can also refinance after they say renovate these apartments or renovate this house. It's just such an amazing wealth building opportunity for, for people inside of America. But the big problem is maybe like you as well, I'm not American and I don't have access to this. So I had to go looking somewhere else in the world. I had to go looking for investments that I could actually participate in that give me opportunity to build the wealth that maybe the Americans can match, I actually think I can do better. So in my videos, I want to share investment strategies from all over the world, not just in America. Yes, there'll be something from America as well, but it's global. It's for people who really just can't access the real estate market in America. So the big, big reason why I'm making this channel is because there are so many cool international investments out there. There's such a cool in international way of life. And I don't want to discourage American investors for watching this YouTube channel too. There's just so many opportunities in the world. It's for everybody. It's not just for international investors outside of America. It's for everybody. Americans, Australians, Great Britain people, Great Britain people, British people. So I truly believe that getting on top of your investments is the best thing that you can do. We have to get away from relying on other people for money. And this is how I'm trying to sustain my lifestyle outside of Australia, outside of America, and not investing in American real estate. It is possible. Oh, and I really like making money. Now I know everyone on YouTube wants you to like and subscribe their videos. And they'll say things like, when I get to a thousand subscribers, I'll eat a horse naked. But Liking, subscribing really just feeds that YouTube algorithm. It means that more people will get to see it and it just puts, we put so much effort and the energy into making these videos. It's, it's free for you to do. It's free for you to just click that little like button. So please, if you haven't done so, can you just do that now? So the biggest investment that you can make with the highest ROI possible is starting a business in a developing country. It is, it's hands down the best investment, the best ROI you can get, starting a business in a developing country. Starting this business in this developing country and then growing it to a stage where it doesn't need you is clearly the best ROI decision you can make. Okay, so the first level of making money is like working, like working for somebody else generally, working in a company, working for the government, something like that, that's, that's level one. Things like being a teacher or an accountant at an accounting firm, uh, even like a lawyer at a big law firm, that's all just level one, okay? So you have to uh, go to work nine to five. A lot of times it's like nine to 8 p.m. Even sometimes you have to do night shift in some jobs. And if you don't show up to work, you're gonna get fired. That's level one, okay? We've all probably been at level one at some stage. Very normal for most 90% of the population to be at level one. The problem is if you don't show up to work, you're gonna get fired. Uh, if you don't like your boss, you're gonna be miserable, uh, you don't get to set your own hours. There's there's lots of issues with that, but it does give you money and we, we need money to live. So generally that's where we all start and that's where we've all been. Okay, now the second level is a little bit cooler. Now the second level is where you're a bit more like a freelancer or a contractor. Uh, some examples of this specialist surgeons can be like this way. They get to pick and choose like the cases that they take. They might only be working for one or two days a week, but they get paid really well for those days. They're in control of how much they work. They're in, sort of in control of how much money they can bring in each week, but there's a bit of a limit to that because they have to put in time to get that money. So a surgeon can't like go away for three weeks and because he's not doing any surgeries, he's not gonna make any money. Another cool job in this space, by the way, is an assassin. For, for those of you interested in level two, assassin's a pretty good one. But 
we all know what's probably going to be up at level three. And as you can see, level three is owning a business. And owning a business gives you the opportunity to hire staff or even better, develop some sort of software that will work and run and grow this business without you even having to be there. You don't actually have to be involved in that business anymore after a period of time. That's the cool part about level three. And that's where the really the elite, like the 1% of the 1%, that's where they get to. They all get to level three, where they're in total control and they have an amazing upside and what's possible with the, with the return on that investment. It's all in level three. You can't really get that amazing ROI opportunity in level one or two. It's got to be level three. So doing level three in a developing country just gives you so many benefits. The big benefit is there's just less competition and less sophisticated competition at that. So for example, a website design company in Australia, super competitive. The quality of the websites that they produce are really high. Lots of competition competing for probably only a small piece of the market considering most businesses there really have a website already. It's already been done. If you're looking at doing the same website design company in a country, let's say like Morocco, where so many businesses don't have websites, they still have just a Facebook page and that's it. They don't have any online shopping carts. They're not developing any sort of email list whatsoever. Doing this in Morocco could be a really good opportunity and you could really stand out quite quickly against just less competition. So there are so many new cool business ideas that already work in say Australia or America or England or Germany, but they just haven't been brought to these developing countries yet. That's where I see the big opportunity is just bringing like things that already work and bringing them to developing countries. That's where I see the opportunity because the competition just isn't sophisticated. And in terms of ROI, that like initial investment that you have to make in starting the business, whether it buying the first round of inventory, whether it's doing a course in, uh, manufacturing clown wigs or something, whatever it is, that initial like investment that you make, the ROI on that is just like, could be like a thousand percent, could be 10,000 percent because starting a business in a developing country gives you that massive opportunity to go really, really big. You can't really do that at level two or level one. So if you go in there as a surgeon, it's just, it's not the same as going there and starting a business, especially a business that's already proven to work in the Western world. Massive opportunity. Let me give you like a really concrete example. So a guy uh, who is in Singapore now, but he went to Ukraine about three years ago and he wanted to buy apartments, renovate them, and then sell them for a profit. That's what he wanted to do. So he went to Ukraine and he realized that to become a resident there and to actually like own property and get all the legal documentation done with the government and the seller, it was, it was really difficult for him. And it took him like a good year of being on the ground in Kiev, like working all of this out. Once he had solved it and had worked out how it all went together and finally was able to do it. He then started a business, hired an amazing Ukrainian lawyer, and he started this business where foreigners now go to this business, foreigners like me, for example, use his help to navigate through all these like all these issues in like buying real estate in Ukraine or setting up a company or getting residency in Ukraine. He now is back in Singapore dealing with other investments. He doesn't look at that business anymore whatsoever. And the business runs itself. It's an amazing little business. Yes, it's only small, but he makes really good cash flow from this business. It's an amazing idea. Found this little problem, found that there was other foreigners wanting this help, and he made a little business out of it. That return on investment for him was just a matter of just hiring those first few staff members. So as you can see, level three is, is the place that we've all got to be playing. The problem is level one's pretty easy to get into. Level two's a little bit harder, but level three is significantly harder and it's significantly higher risk. This is how I had to think of it. So I actually was a teacher when I first started my, my, more my working career. I started at level one as a teacher. Like I, I had no control over how much money I made. I just had to go to work, teach children, come home. That was it. But then I decided to go to level three and just started a business. I actually started a website design company in Australia that obviously failed. What I learned was the risk to go from level one to level three is, is actually not as high as I thought because if it failed, I could just go back to level one and resave money again. And I felt like the risk wasn't as great as everyone makes it out to be when they're starting a business. That initial investment that I had saved up was around about six months worth of my salary. Going back to level one and like 
getting another six months of salary together really isn't the end of the world. And I think that's something that we also try to be thinking about when trying to move from level one to level three. I don't think the risk is as high as we all think. Going for level three is just so important because if you want to be in that 1% of the 1%, you've got to be playing in level three. So as you can see, I had absolutely no chance whatsoever of ever getting into that 1% if I was going to just stay down in level one, stay as a teacher just not possible. I hope that has motivated you enough to at least think about an, a business idea or think about jumping into level three because it's the only place you really can get ahead is level three. So to answer the high risk, high return investment that you can make, it's starting a business. It's got the highest return you can possibly imagine and I'm gonna argue that it's even not that high risk. So let's be a little bit more like this guy. Yes, I'm gonna have a lot more lame jokes like this in the future. Please don't forget to like the video for the YouTube algorithm and I'll see you in the next video.